Hey everyone, my name is Andrea, and in this video, I'll be going over how to create an Azure DevOps pipeline for the Power Platform. We'll walk through which build tools you need to add in order to export and import your solution into a different environment. In order to export your solution using the ADO pipeline, you'll need to create a service connection. So we'll be going over how to register your app in Azure Active Directory for MFA purposes, and how to configure your environment and Power Apps with an application ID. Let's get started. For this session, you'll want four tabs open. One for Power Apps, you're signed into the correct environment. One for Azure DevOps, you'll need to sign into Azure DevOps and go under Pipelines. If you've never created a pipeline, you'll see this screen here. You'll need to go to the Azure Marketplace and look for Power Platform Build Tools. And you'll need to open up the Azure portal for the Azure application um, registration. So first you'll want to go to the Azure Marketplace and get this application. You'll click the get it free button and then your page will look something like this. You'll select your Azure DevOps organization and it'll take you to your Azure DevOps, you'll select your organization, you'll go down to pipelines and you'll select create pipeline. You'll select use a classic editor, select the Azure repos git and start with an empty job. You'll click the plus button to add a task and you'll search power platform. You'll see all of the tasks that you're able to use for the platform. We're going to start with the Power Platform Tool Installer. I'll click Add. To take a peek inside, you can click on it and see all of the options that you're able to add, but we're going to leave these blank for now. Then we'll go back and add another task with this plus button. And we're going to add the Power Platform Who Am I task. You'll notice that this one has a little error saying some settings need attention. So go ahead and click on it. And this is where we'll create that service connection. Now we need to take a pause on our tasks inside of the build tools because we need to create that service connection and register our app in our Azure Active Directory inside of our Azure portal. So we'll navigate over to the Azure portal. We'll open up the left navigation. We'll click on Azure Active Directory, then app registrations, and we'll select new registration. We'll give our application a name this can be changed later and we'll select register this will take you back to the overview page take note of the application client ID as well as the tenant ID here at the bottom you'll need these later when we register our app inside of power apps Next, we'll need to give Dataverse permission to access our app. So we'll go under API permissions. We'll click on add a permission and we'll select Dynamics CRM. We'll check this off. We'll select delegated permissions and then add permissions. While we're here, we'll go ahead and grant permissions. Next, we need to create a client secret so that we can add that to that service connection back in the uh, ADO portal. So we'll click on certificates and secrets and we'll select new client secret. We'll click add and you need to ensure that you save the secret ID, the value, as this will go away 
as soon as you navigate outside of the portal. So we'll copy to that clipboard and we'll keep it somewhere safe. Now we need to create a system user in Dataverse that is linked to our Azure Active Directory app registration so that both Power Apps and Azure are talking to each other. So we'll go back to the Maker Portal. We'll go to the Admin Center. And once we're in the Admin Center, we're going to go to Users and we're going to select See All. You'll select your environment. Once you get to this screen, you're going to click on See All Users. Once you're here, you're going to click on Manage Users in Dynamics 365. Then we want to switch this to Application Users. You're going to click on New. You're going to switch over to Application User to have the correct form. Then we want to go grab the application ID from the Azure Active Directory overview that we created earlier. So we'll clip that and we'll bring it back into this form, we'll paste it in here, and we'll click Save. This will populate the remaining fields automatically. Then you can either click save and close or just exit out of the form. Refresh your screen here. You'll see now that you have one application user called pipeline demo with the number tag in front of it. You want to select that and manage roles. And you'll want to give it system admin and system customizer permissions here. And click OK. Now we're done creating that service principle for our service connection. So we can actually go back to the pipeline now and click on manage. There's a few ways to add a service connection. You can do it directly from the pipeline or you can go to your project settings and add it that way. So as you can see, it automatically took me to my project settings and it's under pipelines and service connections. We'll go ahead and create service connection. Start typing Power Platform in the search bar and click next. Next, you're going to need your server URL, your tenant ID, your application ID, and that client secret that you saved a little bit ago. We'll grab the server URL by going to your Power App and clicking Session Details. And we'll grab this one that says Instance URL. Copy that and take it back to here. Paste it in there. We'll grab the tenant ID director directly from the Azure portal. So that would be this one where it says directory and in parentheses tenant ID. We'll copy to that clipboard and we'll take it back to the service connection. Same thing for the application ID. And the client secret is what you saved earlier and save it to a safe, safe space. We'll give our service connection a name. And we'll grant access permission to all pipelines. Click Save. All right, congratulations. You've created your very first service connection. Now we can go back to the pipeline and refresh this button and we should see our service principle connected here. Make sure you select service principle, which supports MFA. Now let's run this pipeline to make sure that the connection is created. So I'm going to save and queue. 
and then I'm going to run it. Next, we're going to export the solution from the environment. So we're going to add a new task. And we're going to select export. We're going to click inside of it. Go through this process. We'll give the solution a variable name, so we'll say and we'll store that in the variables tab. And we'll ensure that we have the correct solution, so in my um, environment, I'm going to use the feedback app as my solution as the example. We will add this line to the solution output file. Then we'll want to unpack the solution. So we'll go back to add a task. Same, similar process here. Feel free to pause the video now to grab the input files and the target folder to unpack the solution. Then last step is to add a command line script. Then you want to add this script to that command line script. Feel free to pause the video now to grab what you need to do. Then we'll go ahead and save and queue. Make sure that the branch matches what you have inside of your repository. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. You go into repos, say yes, leave, and see how my branch is main here. So we want to make sure that we do that. Looks like we're not able to save, but we can queue, which is the same functionality since we have nothing to save. We'll select main, we'll enable this, and we'll click run. You'll likely run into maybe an error once you click that run button. My error is telling me that uh, it is not ho hosted, it needs to be purchased or granted. Um, in order to troubleshoot your pipeline, you can go under jobs and click that agent job one you'll see exactly where it failed and what you need to do to fix it. Once you've troubleshooted it, your repository should appear with your solution inside of there so that you can go ahead and deploy your solution whenever you want. Um, that is how you create your first pipeline. And as you can see, there's many different ways to create a pipeline with many different tasks, depending on what your needs and requirements are. Hopefully this was a useful reference for you to build your own process with Azure Pipelines. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thanks for watching.